Hey everybody, it's Travis speaking. Um, just wanted to get back to this chessboard that I was creating here a while back. Uh, in the last video, if you were following, I said that I would uh, show you guys how to annotate this and put this onto a drawing. So that's kind of what I want to cover today. Uh, as you can see, we've got this chessboard. But before we get into showing how to annotate this for a uh, manufacturer, what we'll do is we'll clean this up a bit. So as you can see, um, I've got this chessboard here, but there's a number of work features that are showing. I've got uh, this axis in the rook, and there's a work plane. You'll notice that there's a, a bunch of things that I, I don't really want to see. So what I'm going to do to get a better idea is just come over here to the View tab, and I'm going to click on Visual Styles, and I'm just going to choose this Shaded with Edges. And then this will give me a better idea as to what I'm looking at, what part. So the first thing I want to do, I'm just going to grab the rook and I'm going to say open. And it's going to go find that part for me. And now I can come in here and select the axis and change those visibility uh, settings. So if I just click on that uh, visibility, then we can see that it's, it's no longer showing. So I can just do a quick save on that, and then if I come back to my chessboard, you'll notice that it's updated and that it's no longer there. So the other one that I wanted to do that for was this one here, I believe it's this border frame mirror one. And I'm just going to see if there's um, a work plane on that that's showing. It does look like it. So it's this one here. I'll just expand that out and grab that work plane. And you'll notice that that looks a little bit different than the typical parts that we see. This is because when I created another part um, from the assembly interface, I used a plane on this part here, which is actually a reference of border frame dot IPT, right? not border frame uh, underscore MIR. So either way, let's just take that. We'll turn the visibility off and I'll hit save. And coming back to the assembly, did it shut it off? No. So clearly that's that's not the one. So what I do is essentially keep coming back to this uh, assembly file until I get these all turned off. Now you can see there's planes on the, the pattern as well. So probably what I'd want to do is just uh, instead of doing it this way, I could come back to say the open feature and just kind of hover over these. So now I can see like I've, I can open up base and there's a plane there as well that needs to be turned off. Okay, so I'm not going to do that for all of these today. Uh, just for the sake of the video, I wanted to get into something else. So um, let's move on from that. What I wanted to cover was how to get some quick annotations on to say um, individual parts and the entire assembly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the inventor application menu and I'm going to go to the new function and down here under drawings you'll see that you have a DWG template as well as an IDW. So I'm going to choose the IDW and you'll notice that in projects it's still saying chessboard. I'll hit create and it's going to take a second there and load up the tool set for um, the drawing template. Okay, so here we are, we've got our template now, and you'll notice that across the top on the ribbon, we're getting some different tool sets here in the tabs. So the first things first, once you have your, your template set up, you can you can come in here and you can change the sheet format, the border, the title block. You've got lots of options in here. So let's just say we wanted to go to um, a D size sheet instead. All right, we can click on that and it's going to change that up for us into that D size. And it's also giving us some predefined views. Okay, so I, I don't really want these, so what I'm going to do is just delete these and uh, we'll start from scratch. I'll show you how you can uh, get some of these views in, in here. So just a couple things to bear in mind when you're working with the views that you've got in here 
if you want to select a view, you'll notice that when I bring my mouse over the view, I'm getting that dotted red line. And that means now I can select that view to either edit it or get rid of it or move it around. You'll notice that once my cursor finds that red dotted line, I can simply hold down the left mouse button and now I'm dragging that around. Okay, so I'm just going to delete these. Now let's start from scratch. So I've got an empty sheet here and uh, you'll notice that it's saying drawn by Travis. I've got some uh, predefined fields and what if, if I wanted to fill those in I would simply come back to uh, the project settings here up in I properties and fill that stuff out here in, in the project in the summary. So that's pretty great too. That's a really quick and simple way of managing that. Okay, so let's start with a base view. Um, if I want to send this out for manufacturing, I'm going to create a series of orthographics and then give them a 3D view as well. So you'll notice here when I open up the base view dialog box, I'm getting chessboard.iam. That's the first thing that I'm seeing because that's the last file that I really worked on. If I hover over here, I can get an idea as to how this looks and what the, the base view is going to be. So I don't want it to be an elevation. Um, I'm going to want that be I'm going to want that to be from the top view. But right now it's also a one to one scale, so I'm just going to change that to um, no, sorry, not two to one, one to two. Okay, so uh, what I can do is I'll put that right down here in this lower left corner, and now you'll notice up here at the top in the left hand corner it's gone from base to the projected view command okay so what I want to do is just start to drag these off of what I was just looking at and you'll notice that if I go to a corner it's going to give me an isometric and then if I project it off at 90 degrees okay it's giving me something a little bit different so I think what I want to do here instead is uh, just that that view right there that's all I really want um, but I want I want that 3d view I'm gonna do that a little bit differently okay so all I did was right click and when it says create you hit OK and it puts these views in here so let's take a look at these right now we've got some nice uh, CAD work here if we look down we've got lines that we can select individually but if I wanted to dimension this now I don't have to re redesign the wheel here. I can just select that view and right click. And I'm going to come halfway down this flyout menu here and I'm going to say retrieve dimensions. So watch this. This is really nice. I'm going to select the view. Well, that's already done. But I'm going to click on select dimensions now. And I'm just going to make a crossing window all over everything. Okay. So now that I, I have those dimensions that are available to me, I'm going to hit OK, and it puts them in place for me. So I don't have to go over all of this. I can, I can come back and add some more dimensions later, but this is really nice just to kind of get the ball rolling here. So what I'll do here is I'll just send some of these dimensions out because they're uh, redundant. So I'll take that angular dimension and I'll just make it so that there's only one there and that should be good enough for those ones okay so now you're also seeing that um, that's replicated over here we don't really need these anymore right so I can just select those and get rid of them but I've also got some other geometry here for the squares that uh, hasn't been referenced up above here so we'll get into that in this corner what I probably do is uh, just leave the dimension for the square. In regards to the rook, I'm going to leave that out. All right, so I'm just going to start cleaning some of this up here because, like I said before, a lot of it isn't really uh, necessary. All right, if I want, I can just grab these, these nodes as well and those will affect my uh, extension lines or the, the leader. And so I'm just going to make these a little more legible. 
Okay, and again, we've got some redundant dimensions, so we don't really need to have those in there anymore. All right, so if there's some dimensions that I want to make a little bit clear, maybe I'll do these manually. Okay, so what I'm going to do is come over to the Annotate tab, and now I can just grab the Dimension tool and simply click on certain lines. Okay, and if I want to put in uh, an additional piece of information I can do that but really all I want is just the just the measurement right now so I do another one an overall okay and uh, again what I could do is call out a couple other other dimensions here like the overall diameter of the rook or perhaps where it's placed in reference Okay, uh, so you, you can also add other things in like text here, so this is pretty straightforward. I mean, you grab the text and just click anywhere on the screen and then you can put in something like Travis's chessboard. All right, and then you can change the font to something very whimsical or something a little more scriptish, and you can see there's my note okay so there's lots of stuff to explore here and once you have a full assembly you can also do stuff like a parts list and basically you just come in here and you select the view and I'm just gonna let this do oh it's disabled in the reference assembly let's see what the outcome is so it gave me a warning message that I could have investigated a little bit further, but I'm just going to go with what it gave me for the time being. You can come back in here and, um, you know, make edits as well. If you wanted to put in descriptions, simply just double click on it. And now you can fill in these fields with whatever you need to and hit OK and it'll make those updates for you. Uh, but this is really nice because now we've got a couple of these pieces. Um, you can see that veneer border because of the way that I've developed this assembly it's listing um, veneer border veneer border mirror one as one thing uh, you can you can go back now and, and make slight edits to change that but you'll know that by the the naming convention that there's actually one two three four of these pieces okay um, some other interesting things is uh, you can do the, the balloon and it'll tell you what what that part is that you've grabbed um, so I just right click hit continue and it creates that balloon so now I know that if I reference that piece I come over here and look at number two it's the insert white piece whereas the next one over would be insert Okay, so I'm able to do that. There's also the auto balloon, which is a pretty, pretty great feature as well. If I can get that selected. Ignore multiple instances. Actually, let's just make that window again all the way around. Right, so you can do some pretty excellent stuff. Oh, I missed it. Auto balloon. Let's try that one more time. Select the view. Choose the components. Okay. And for placement, I just want vertical. So I'm gonna maybe come up here. Okay now I'll hit OK. So that makes it nice because the number associated is right here by my table and I can see where these are pointing to. It does a pretty good job. I mean you might want to uh, modify these a little bit, which you can do, I believe. Yes, there you go. It's just grabbing the wrong node. Okay, so basically it's very similar to AutoCAD in the way that you have some grips here that you can you can modify, but uh, yeah, this is a, a great way of dimensioning uh, some components 
and uh, you can send that off for manufacturing. Now, the other thing I wanted to do, I'm going to go back to place views, and sometimes this is all nice for manufacturing, but you want to give a 3D uh, representation as well. You can come in here to projected view, and I'm just going to grab this one here and come over to, uh, that, that looks good there, and then right click and hit create again. But uh, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, so I'm going to highlight the view itself when I see that red dotted line, and right click, and I'll say edit, and this one I'm going to do one to one, and I'm going to change that uh, view style so that it's shaded. You could put uh, hidden lines in there as well, we'll see that might get a little muddy, but let's take a look at that. Okay, yeah, so that's, that's starting to look a little bit. Uh, unclear. I shouldn't say it's starting to. It doesn't look very clear at all. But we can make some changes here. I might not want to go that large with the scale or I could readjust this as well. But uh, let's just come back here and take off those hidden lines. Edit view. We don't want those on there. Okay, there we go. So if we come in here now, we can see a little bit better. Uh, it's, it's dark material, obviously, so it's a little bit hard to see, but there you have it. It's some uh, pretty simple fundamentals for setting up drawings with Autodesk Inventor. So um, you can come in here and tinker around. There's lots of stuff to do. You can create sketches over top, so if you do need to uh, put in some more geometry here, you can do that. You've got a lot of flexibility. So again, if there's any questions, please post a comment, or if you have any suggestions, uh, we'd love to hear those as well. So this is Travis signing off. Thanks for watching. Bye now.